Okay, so uh, right now we're going to talk uh, pretty fairly in depth into cylinder heads. I'm going to cast choke here. Um, that's it. Pretty fairly in depth into cylinder heads. Yeah, so uh, I guess uh, more specifically the dimensions and the importance of dimensions in cylinder heads. So there's a lot of things that people don't take into account, and you know I say this over and over again. Yet I'll say it again for the importance of this particular uh, video, and that is that that an engine is a system, so you can't do anything to one thing without affecting something in some drastic form or fashion. And the cylinder head is certainly no different. Um, so, you know, when we are looking at cylinder heads, we have to consider a lot of guys are buying short blocks or buying long blocks. And they may buy a short block from a customer, or excuse me, from a supplier, and then take their heads to the machine shop. And then when they do that, they take their heads to the machine shop, and they've got, uh, they don't know what the deck height was, that the, uh, the person that supplied them the engine or the short block was. They have no clue in knowing what the deck height is. And then they take the other part of this to the machine shop and then they begin to machine down the top of the cylinder head, right? Or the face of the cylinder head. So now you've kind of got two different dimensions. It would be like uh, somebody doing the concrete work, right? And not really having any of the same, and not sharing the same plans. Right. Well, and you've got a piston coming out the top of the deck, right. or, or not out necessarily, could still be below the deck height, it just depends on the engine. And a valve, every time you machine that head, that valve sticks out more and more and more and more every single time, unless you're adjusting it. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, I'm going to go ahead here. So, that's, that's definitely one of the relationships that change between, you know, piston protrusion, you know, if the guy does machine the block, he can measure that and say, okay, yeah, your piston protrusion is this, but here's the problem, and here's where we really run into issues. Okay, so now we have a deck height, and think about this in terms of an origin. So you, how everything has to have an origin. If you have an address, I promise you that address that you live at, whatever, it was based off of some origin in your state, your county, your city, whatever, and it's this far from this point, right? Well, our origin on an engine is based off the crankshaft center line. Typically, that is where our zero zero origin is, right? So if the deck height is based off from the center line of the crankshaft to the top of the deck and we go okay that's our deck height then now our valve train geometry so our rocker arm uh, at the top touches onto the tip of the valve okay but the more that we machine the surface here down the closer everything moves if this was the crankshaft here everything starts moving that direction now because this is now no longer thick problem is, is it's not just one thing that changed. Now, what's happened is, is that this valve, as it lay, and we may need to turn that around so the camera can see it, um, but the valve itself, light cast iron, right? Yeah, no, thank you. Couldn't so, do that with the aluminum we have here. <laughs> so, as the valve now is moving also down closer to the piston, just as you said, your valve recessions, which we'll say over here, if we continue to whack this off, but we don't affect anything with cutting the valve seat, we know that our valve recession is actually uh, going to become shallower and shallower. Okay. Well, some folks go, okay, well, that's fine. We'll just cut this dimension. Okay. And this is really where it starts to get screwed up. You go, okay, well, you cut that dimension. Fine. Okay. But when you cut this side here for your valve seat, right, our valve seat's now cut so that our valve goes and it goes down. When it moves down, here's what happens. Now that the valve is moving this direction, it's coming out this direction further. Okay, well that's a problem because that tip has to touch onto that, that touches onto this, that pushes on the lifter, it goes to the camshaft. Woo! But all we did was change one dimension. Right. And we just now we've just changed four or five different things. So now we go, okay, well, we need to change uh, and do something about cutting the valve stem down, right? So now we have just the valve stem. Well, there's one other thing. Now your spring tension has changed as well because your springs are locked on to a groove right here. Now what we've done is we've moved this up, but this spring has remained in its same position because it's based off of a non-machine surface here. So as we move this spring and we maintain its position and we move the valve up, What's going to happen to my tension on my spring? Well, it's going to now become looser and looser, right? So it's not going to have the same seat pressure. Okay, well, now that's a problem. So now if that's going to be fixed, we have to do something about either shimming the spring or changing uh, the retainer to adjust that or even the valve that would accommodate for that. So the importance of valve train geometry is extremely critical 
That's the reason why we always encourage guys to buy long blocks. Because I'm setting this engine up on the short block method. Okay, I get it. I understand where everything's at. Now, there's another thing, too. We just did this. If we don't adjust this and we shorten the deck and we shorten the cylinder head, and now the valve rod is actually pushing through this hole further, and the rocker arm is touching and pushing down here, it pushes on the rod that pushes on the lifter. Now we have too much preload and we cause lifter failure because we're bottoming out. So those are all things to take into consideration. Now how do you combat that? Well, knowing what you changed and then doing something about it. Um, you have to alter each value. So it's a domino effect. Those are one, uh, one of the main things and that's, that's like I said, that's one of the reasons why I really, really prefer uh, to be able to sell like a long block because I can set my, my whole valve train system up. Now, the other portion of this um, is the concentricity of a valve. That's going about in critical uh, cylinder head geometry would be um, the concentricity of the valve face to the valve stem, right? Now, what concentricity means is basically something sh sharing the same center, right? So right now, if this is locked in, in, in space, the center of this, theoretically, right? Let's say this was a press fit. But the center of the valve, if this is perfectly straight, and the center of this guide is on center with one another, they're said to be concentric. Right. Okay, so now, if you understand that, what's really critical about that is, is that the face of the valve here that is actually going to ride on the face of the seat needs to be concentric with the guide, with the valve stem, right? So that face has to be centered. Well, what else has to be centered? Okay, now, the seat also has to be centered because if when you cut that seat and the way that it's wor the way it works is is that a guide is ran down into the valve guide you have a pilot guide that goes down and then when it cuts if it moves at all it becomes uh, it goes into orbit so now the face isn't cut concentrically with the valve you say it goes into orbit. So you're, you're talking about if there's any movement in there at all, you're talking about it beating, it beating up everything around, basically it's beating up the bore, and then allows the valve to move around. And it's not necessarily beating it up, but it might cut it out of round. Okay. So okay. the face that's on this is maybe 60 thousandths, 80 thousandths, right. right? But we are shooting for less than 1 thousandths tolerance of concentricity. Okay. Because any more than it will not seat properly, right? right. You've got two angle, you've got an angle of the valve face and the valve, now this one's not cut, so it's not really a good description, but if this, if this was cut, uh, then you would have a, a, a matching uh, or a correlating uh, angle, right? But if we move it over a little bit at that point, those two faces no longer touch correctly, right. then that angle's not correct, then it's gonna leak. Yeah. So it's extremely critical that we have everything on center. And that is a critical dimension on cylinder heads. So that's something that's really important. A lot of times people will just buy an engine and think, okay, well, the money's in the in the block, in the short block of it, right? Get a really good short block, get good bearings, good rods, good pistons, coated pistons, whatever it might be, good camshaft. And they go slapping either a used set of heads or, you know, Joe Blow's engine shop down the street that is going to stone the thing instead of cutting the seat, right? And that's, that was typically done years ago. Because, and a lot of times, I mean, the first guy that I ever got doing this stuff, he, he didn't have a way to cut the seats because he said, oh, it's too hard to cut the seats on these diesels. And uh, years ago when I was tacking, that's that's what his, his way of doing it was. The problem with it was is that the pilots and stuff, when they would slide that stuff on to, to, to try to stone that seat, there was so much slop in it that, I mean, nothing would seal. Well, and you were saying this earlier, stone is, is a very, what's the right phrase here versus how you do it now. Yeah, versus again, we're using a uh, carbide cutter uh, yeah. for this actually. Uh, instead, this would be a carbide cutter, um, and it gives us a, we can start fresh, we can start new, right? Yeah. So, stone basically is going to, at some point in time, kind of sort of follow uh, an existing pattern or shape, um, but it does not give us uh, the same quality that the uh, cutting of it with carbide and starting, starting fresh, so to speak, with. It, and it also, stoning is not intended for much material removal uh, like it would be um, with a uh, carbide insert so we can really adjust our seat recession or excuse me our, our valve uh, recession 
um, with a carbide insert, whereas with the stone, we're not. We're just kind of polishing it up, so to speak. When you're saying stony, you mean a grinding wheel as, a, as opposed to a carbide. It has tip. nothing to do with drugs. <laughs> That's how I was thinking. Okay. I was thinking. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. So, stoning. Stoning. <laughs> I mean, it was also in the Old Testament, too. I mean, it's pretty brutal. That's, that's where I was going. Okay. Yeah. All Throw, right. Throwing rocks. Back on track. Um, so, those are all important things. So, valve train geometry um, is ext extremely important um, to get right because if it's not, it's going to have a major effect. It's going to have a major effect on. Um, engine performance uh, because uh, that if you have a valve that's not sealing properly um, there goes it doesn't matter how good your rings are sealing if your valves not sealing right. everything has to seal up uh, as, as good as it possibly can um, the better it seals uh, the better efficiency the engine is going to make so you can you can have you can spend a lot of money on the bottom end but if you're wasting it on the top end it's really it's futile and if it's way off you're uh Pistons, pistons valves as well. Yeah, so if your valve recession is not correct uh, and your spring tension again was really loose uh, and you know and uh, that can happen a lot of times with a, a spy, especially with a VGT turbocharger setup especially on those that have dual sequential turbochargers because you're building so much boost down low um, that it can blow the valves open so seat pressure is absolutely a must to monitor um, because if not uh, and you have shallow recessions um, you can definitely run to uh, mating components that you don't want to make. Now, say something that will make me feel really stupid here. Older 350 Chevy, for example, you could adjust valve lash just like you can on a Cummins. Mm -hmm. Most engines you can't adjust that way though. Right. Right? So well, normally you take an, like an Allen key, put it in the middle, and back the valve lash up. Mm -hmm. A lot of the newer engines you don't do that way, right? How, Hydraulic. Yeah. So you're, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. So basically, it's because it's a hydraulic lash adjuster. So the new Cummins, for instance, we talk about that a lot. The 2019s and that have a hydraulic lash adjuster. So they, all the Power Stroke stuff has hydraulic lash adjusters. All the Duramax is a solid roller. Um, the Cummins is flat tappet, you know, from 18 and down. Uh, so you did have adjustments there. Those adjustments were really, um, it helps because it gives you a little bit of latitude um, on valve train geometry. However, that being said, Again, uh, the tip of the rocker, and it depends again on the, um, the engine design because valve bridges that are being used on the 24 valves, um, they've got, uh, they're not actually riding on the tip, they're riding on the, the valve bridge itself, but nonetheless, tracking of that and, and the overage of the nose of the rocker arm, the placement of that, uh, if it's extending too far, can cause premature failure and premature wear on some, some items yep. and stress on certain things. So it's really critical to, to have that set up right. You can't just machine it wrong and then adjust something to an extreme and then put you outside the parameters. But it does give you a little bit of latitude. Uh, the Ford stuff, not so much. And like I said, the new Cummins stuff, uh, now it's even more critical because um, the thing about hydraulic lifter is this. Um, they have a they have a happy place where they have um, a certain amount of travel in that lifter. Uh, the lifter acts as though, not only does it act as a lash adjuster, but it also acts as a shock absorber, right, for the valve train components. But if you bottom it out where there's not enough travel, there's not enough shock, it's like the same effect of running a straight axle on something with, you know, absolutely no, uh, uh, no absorber of anything. It's very, it's very rough, right? And so you're, not going to get away without the effects of that. You're, the rest of your valve train is going to suffer. That's exactly why I asked you that. Because mm -hmm. that's all that so many people have to say is, oh, you just adjust your lash to a certain extent. Right. Uh, yeah. Everything has to live in its happy place. Right. <laughs> or it doesn't live. Yeah. So, that makes sense. Some things to think about when you're thinking about valve train components. Cool. Thanks, guys. Subscribe, like, please. Helps us out a lot here. Um, especially if you want to see more uh, more content about getting deep into the insides of a diesel engine. Really yeah. any engine, but uh, exactly. specifically what we're touching on. It's, yeah. it's diesels. So uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Appreciate yeah. you. Thanks guys.